What's up, YouTube? It's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul, and welcome to Tips and Tricks Thursday, episode number 11. Today will be the final installment to top off the series of the three-part series of the Sends and Buses in Logic. I hope you learned something in it. Um, hope you enjoyed the series, for that matter. And, uh, well, if you haven't seen the first one and the second one, I encourage you to click the red link at the top of the video. It will take you back to the first video, and then you can come back to the third one and watch this one so you can watch them in order. If you don't want to do that, you can watch them out of order. Yeah, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter to me. Just as long as you watch them and enjoy them, that's all I care about. And uh, yeah, so with that said, I will move on to the third part tutorial. And I want to cover something that Kongui 1976 uh, YouTube user pointed out last week is that he said that sometimes he makes the track outputs to a bus. And that is something I wanted to talk about in this uh, the third part series anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So what Kongui1976 is saying is that he takes his, uh, he creates sort of a little submix within his session. So let's say I want the kick and clap to be sent to one fader and I can control the volume of both those tracks under one fader. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select clap and I'm going to select my kick. And instead of going to the bus section and bringing up a bus, I'm going to go to my output section. So under the IO, EXS24 is my input, stereo output is my output. So I'm going to go to click the stereo output and go to bus. I'm going to use a bus I didn't use yet. And I'm going to go to bus 4. What that does is it creates another auxiliary track. So the outputs of these track is going to go through bus 4 and then it's going to go into the auxiliary track bus 4 and output the stereo. That's how I'm going to hear the sound. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play and you'll hear how that sounds. Obviously, you'll hear the kick and the clap. and a little bit of the other effects because I didn't mute my uh, sends. All right, so now what we did here is that this fader over here, which I should rename it, we call it kick clap mix. So this one over here sort of controls both of these faders. So if I want to lower the kick and clap as a whole, I'm going to go ahead and lower this fader. And if I don't like how the kick is sounding, the kick is a little too high for me, I'm going to go ahead and lower this fader. I'm going to hire the clap. And if I just want to take it out all completely all together, the complete dry mix is out. All you hear is the reverb. If I want to bring in back the dry, I'm going to go ahead and hit play and bring back the mute. So there it is right there. That's how you send a bus through the outputs. And now... Sending a bus through the outputs is really good, as you saw right there. It creates a little sum mix in your session. So if you have a group of drums, a group of um, different guitars, so yeah, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar, and you kind of have all those things, you sort of want to create a little sub mix of them. So let's say your drum track is 10 tracks. You want to take all those 10 tracks, send it to one sub mix track, which you take the outputs. You take the outputs and send it to a bus, and then you have one fader to control it. So when you're going ahead and editing your uh, your session, you're gonna, just going to go ahead and change one fader instead of changing 10 faders on the drums. It's just very simple to do as you do automation in your mix. You just take one fader, go up and down, and that is that on that. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about was a question that Logic Ish had. Uh, he basically asked what our post and pre-sends are and what are the difference between the two. Well, post-sends are by defaulted in logic so whenever you bring up a bus it's going to be a post fader send so what is a post fader send i'll show you right now the way you bring up the menu uh to bring up to change between post fader or pre fader you go to the bus that you want hold down the left uh mouse button this little menu will come up and as you can see i'm on a post fader send because that is the default that logic goes to basically a post fader send is ultimately controlled by how much volume you have here. So if my volume is at this level, ooh, I'm just going to solo my kick and clap here for a second. Take out the buses here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and solo my clap and solo my reverb. So as you can see, I have a kick in my clap going, going on right there. You can hear it because my volume is up here. But if I go ahead and lower the volume here to nothing, you're not going to hear any dry and you're not going to hear any reverb, even though I have a send out going here. And then I'll bring it back up and you'll see the reverb coming back in as well as the dry mix. That is because this is a post fader send. Bus one is labeled as a post uh, fader send. So again, 
what it does, it goes through here, listens to whatever volume I'm at here, and then automatically makes a proportion volume send over here and then sends it out to the track. So that is pretty much what you want all the time. You want really a post fader send. So when you change a dry level of a track, the effects track will kind of react accordingly. Now, on the other hand, if it was a pre fader send, so I'm going to change it to a pre fader. So again, go to the send that you want, click and hold down the mouse and select pre fader. You know, it's a pre fader when it changes it to green. And this is very easy to understand. It's basically controlled by how much volume you have here. It doesn't matter what volume this is at. It only matters how much volume you have here. So I'm going to go ahead, hit play, and I'm going to take out the clap completely, the dry mix of the clap completely. So as you see, you still have the clap going on here. The, sorry, the reverb, the effects track going on because this is a pre-fader send. doesn't matter how much this is. This will, this will never get affected by this. Because, well, if you ask because, that's because the chain stops there. It doesn't go to here and then back up. It just goes right to there and sends it out. It doesn't even listen to what this is. So that is a pre-fader send. Now, for the most part, you're going to want to use a post-fader send, as I was saying. But for a pre-fader pre send, it is good sometimes. And in a situation, let's say you're mixing some dialogue in a movie or TV show and the actor is walking down a hallway, this will be a good time to use a pre-fader send and automate your dry mix level. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you that quickly. All right, so let's say you, the clap is my uh, actor's voice and he's walking down the hallway. This is how it'll sound under a pre-fader sound. See, if you heard from there, it sounded like the clap was going down a hallway as if an actor was walking down the hallway. We're just pretending my clap is the actor. And that is kind of the times you use a pre-fader scent. Anytime you want to counteract the effect in the dry mix together you want to use a pre-fader sound but most of the time logic defaults to a post-fader sound and uh, post-fader send and that is kind of the send that you want to talk about so that is the difference between pre and post-fader send if you have any more questions again you can ask in the comment section all right one more thing i want to talk about before i let you guys go is how to change the the names of the bus one. So instead of having to rename every track every time you create a bus, let's say you always want bus one to be reverb, you always want bus two to be delay, you always want bus three to be an echo, whatever it is, you can change the names of the bus physically so you don't have to name it every time. So every session you open, you already know bus one is a reverb and you go to reverb. So how do you do that? It's very simple. You just go up to your top, click options, go to audio, and go down to IO labels. This little window will pop up and you'll see all your inputs and outputs. Under bus one, you have it selected. So what I do, as you can see here, I already named one of uh, my bus one, because usually my bus one is usually reverb, but uh, for this tutorial, I switched it back to bus one. So here it is. So here's bus one, and I'm gonna name it reverb because that's what I typed in over here. All you have to do to change the name over here, just double click and it will come up and you can edit it just like you would any track in Logic. And let's say my bus two, I would want it to be called, what do I want it to be called, a delay. And my bus three, I want to be called an echo. So you can just go ahead and change the names of the bus just by clicking, and you can call it whatever you want. So last one, I want it to be called Adam, whatever, right? So instead of now the bus is being called bus one, bus two, bus three, bus four, it's going to be called reverb, delay, echo, Adam. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here. So automatically logic has changed it to here. So reverb, reverb, delay, echo. So the input says reverb. So you know right away that as my reverb track. So if I want to send another track to, let's say the reverb track, that's going to go to bus and click reverb. Again, go to the next one, bus, delay. And that is how it, uh, basically how you rename the bus sense in Logic. If you have any more questions, you can ask me in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this three-part tutorial. I probably will add one more thing later on, uh, probably next week, just to kind of complete this little series here, even though this is the third part series. I kind of want to separate the other one because it could be used for other things as well. That's it for me. I'm Adam from Miami Music Mogul. Hope you enjoyed this series. I will talk to you soon, guys. Later. Oh, remember to subscribe, comment, and uh, yeah, rate my videos. Later, guys.